this tutorial, we're going to create a credits view for this Apple Watch application. There is nothing complicated in this particular view with the Swift UI sheet. However, there is an opportunity for us to create a reusable component. By the end of this class, this credits view with the new component will be finished. All right. To make this tutorial short and sweet, let's open Xcode and start coding. First of all, we need to create a new Swift UI file in the view group, as I show you. Give it the name credits view and save it as usual. Next. Replace the default placeholder text with a new vertical stack container. Enter this code. vstack. Spacing. 3. New comment. The end of the vstack. New comment. Profile image. New comment. Header. And finally, enter. New comment. Content. As you can see, we laid down three main sections for this layout. After that, we will start developing a new header component from an existed code snippet. Header component. Open the detail view file and navigate to the header section. Here select the entire code of this previously created header and cut it out to the clipboard as I do. Great job. Now, let's create a new group in the Project Navigator. Then give it the name, Component. After that, we will create another new Swift UI file. Not surprisingly, give it the name Header View, please, and save it into this new group. Finally, we will replace the default welcome message with the code snippet from the clipboard, as I show you. So far, so good. Now our goal is to modify this header so we can use it multiple places in this project. More precisely, we want a header component with a title and another one without a title. To make it happen, we must wrap this code into a new vertical stack container, so let's do it. Enter. VStack. Then let's define the two main parts of this layout. Enter. New comment. Title. Then, new comment. Separator. Lastly, new comment. The end of the VStack. Super. After all this prep work, we need to create a new property for the title. Enter the following code. Var. Title. String. Equals. Empty string. Now we will create a new conditional view to either make this title view visible or hidden depending on the value of this property. Enter this code. If title not equals to empty string. Just hold on a sec. Since the default value of this title property is an empty string, therefore no matter what we type inside this conditional statement, we won't see it in the preview. Wouldn't it be nice if we could see what's going on in the preview? And? This is exactly what we're going to do right now. Go to the preview, and embed the header view into a new group as I show you. After that, we need to add another header view to this group, but this time with a title. Start typing. Header view. Title. Credits. It's done. There are two Apple Watches on the canvas. It's time to finish up developing this header component. Jump back to the conditional statement, and let's add a new text view to it, shall we? Enter. Text. Title, dot, uppercase. And. There it goes. Now, let's add some modifiers to it and make this design better. Enter this code. Font. Title, 3. Font weight. Bold. Foreground color. Accent color. That's what I was talking about you. How cool is that? I hope that you can see why it's beneficial for us making some modifications here and there in the preview, 
so that we can design our layout no matter what the conditions are. All right. Enough with the talk, and let's continue our work. Code implementation. After making the header component ready to use, we need to jump back to the detail view file and add a new header. Enter. Header view. Title. Empty string. There is nothing new here. But what about the credits view? Go back to the credits page, and let's add a new header to it, but this time with a title as well. Enter. Header view. Title. Credits. There it goes. Creating a new header for any page is as simple as that. But we won't stop here. Navigate to the content section, and let's add some text views to it, shall we? Text. Robert Petras. Of course, you should enter your name here. Then add these modifiers to this text view. Foreground color. Primary. Font weight. Bold. After that, we will add another text to it. Enter. Text. Developer. Font. Footnote. Foreground color. Secondary. Font weight. Light. As you can see in the preview, the bottom part of the credits view is already done. Excellent job so far. Now let's continue with the profile image, shall we? There are two options, and you need to choose the best one for you. The first option. You will add your own profile picture at the top of this credits view. The second option. You will follow me and have some fun by adding a random illustration as a profile image. It's your choice to decide how to finish this lecture. Profile image. Now, let's get down to business. Let's add a new image to this view with some modifiers. Image. Developer. Dash. Number 1. Resizable. Scale to fit. Layout priority. 1. We can check out the first illustration in the preview. Now, we will create two properties for the sake of practicing Swift programming, shall we? Enter the following code. At. State. Private. Var. Random number. Int. Equals. Int. Dot. Random. In. One. Dot. Dot. Less than. Four. This code will generate a random whole number in a closed range from 1 to 3. After that, we will use this random number to generate a new computed property. Enter. Private. Var. Random image. String. Return. Developer. Dash. Number. Backslash. Open parenthesis. Random number. Closed parenthesis. After all of this work, finally, we can finish up the profile image by replacing the static image with random illustrations. Enter. Image. Random image. And. There it goes. Easy PC. Now let's see how this code works in action, shall we? For the first time, let's start and stop the live preview a couple of times and check out what's happening. As you can see, our code works without any glitches, and we can see totally different illustrations as profile images randomly displayed in the preview. How fantastic is that? Watch OS Sheet. We will wrap up this class by creating a new Swift UI sheet. So when users tap on the information button on the detail view page, then the credits will show up. To make this happen, first, we need to open the detail view file and create a new property. Enter the following code. At. State. Private. Var. Is credits presented. Bool. Equals. False. This new property will store the state of whether the credits view is visible or isn't. Now, we will add a special modifier to the info image to toggle this value each time users tap on it. 
navigate to the info image and enter this code. On tap gesture, is credits presented, dot, toggle. The only thing that we need to do now is to create the actual sheet after it. Enter. Sheet. Is presented. Dollar sign. Is credits presented. Content. Credits view. This code will generate a Swift UI sheet on Apple Watch. To check how it works, we need to start the live preview as I show you. After its launch, please click on the info button and see what's happening. And there is the credits view. As you can notice, the watchOS automatically generated a cancel button at the top left corner of the Apple Watch. Isn't that great, is it? Now let's continue testing how our code works. There it is again. Just one thing you should keep in mind. A sheet on watchOS looks slightly different than in iOS. On watchOS, we got a built-in cancel button, and the sheet fills out the whole screen. On the other hand, in iOS, we don't have a cancel button, but we can pull down and dismiss the sheet. And? Guess what? We have reached the end of this lesson. I guess it wasn't that hard for you to follow the instructions. But most importantly, our Apple Watch application got another finite feature. You know, I firmly believe that with developing some small details we can build up a really great application. And those small details separate our app from the low-quality apps in the marketplace. Anyway, that's my two cents. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you're as eager as I'm to finish up this notes app in the final class. Until then, happy coding!